Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. Today's video is a collaboration with Tiffany at Small Town 6. I will have her channel linked in my description box below. So as soon as you're done watching my video, make sure you head on over to her channel, show her some love and let her know that I sent you. She's a wife and a mama and she does what's for dinner videos, hauls, all kinds of good content. So I know you'll love her channel. She's really sweet. So like I said, make sure you go check her out. And Tiffany, thank you for collabing with me. If you are new to my channel, if you're coming over from Tiffany, Welcome. Like I said, my name is Megan. I do weekly what's for dinner videos, grocery hauls, and more foodie content. So if that sounds like something you are into, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. In today's what's for dinner video, I will be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you're looking for some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, I tried a new recipe for a Chipotle Ranch Grilled Chicken. This is from The Plain Chicken. I'll have her recipe linked in the description box below, but it's super easy. You just need a couple of ingredients. To a blender, I'm going to add some ranch dressing. You can use your favorite bottled. I'm just using some of the semi-homemade. It's just the Hidden Valley Dry Ranch Packet Mix according to the package instructions. To that, we're going to add some chipotles and adobo, and then just give that a good blend until the chipotles are completely processed, and then that's it for the marinade. Like I said, a couple of ingredients. Now, quick note, I did use probably about half the amount of chipotles that the recipe called for, so I would start with a little bit and then, um, you know, taste the ranch, see if you want to add some more chipotles, do it to your preference. I'm adding that Chipotle ranch to a Ziploc bag along with some chicken breasts. And then you're going to want let this marinade, I would say at least a couple hours if you have it. I did this overnight. When I was ready to cook the chicken for dinner, I removed it from the marinade. And then I don't think the recipe said to do this, but I seasoned both sides of the chicken with just a little bit of salt and pepper. And then I cooked this on my outdoor grill. You can do this inside on a grill. You can do it in the air fryer, on top of the stove, in the oven, however you want to cook it. Just make sure you cook the chicken until it's at least 165 degrees internal temperature. And then when I cook chicken breasts, I really like to put it on a plate, cover it with foil and let it rest for about five minutes or so. That just allows the juices to go back into the chicken so that when you cut into it, it's nice and juicy. For one of my sides, I'm going to make a charred corn salad. I may have shared this before on my channel. I can't remember. This is a Jamie Dean recipe. It was on his cooking show years and years ago on the Food Network channel, and I've made it ever since then. I will have the recipe linked in the description box below for you. We're going to start out by making the vinaigrette. In this small bowl, I'm going to add some olive oil, fresh lime juice, salt, and pepper, and then give that a really good whisk. Taste it and adjust the seasonings to your taste if it needs a little more salt, a little more lime juice. And sometimes I will chop up some cilantro and add it to the vinaigrette and add that to the salad as well. That's really yummy if you like cilantro. So I'm going to set that vinaigrette to the side and then in a larger bowl, we're going to assemble the salad. So here I've got some brown rice. I just cooked this up in my rice cooker. You could use leftover brown rice. It's a really good um, use for it. If you don't want to use brown rice, of course, you can just use plain white rice. And I did allow the rice to cool, by the way. So next, I'm going to add in some quartered cherry or grape tomatoes, some chopped green onions. I've got some black beans that I rinsed and drained. Now for the charred corn part. Now, the recipe calls for you to, um, you know, char up the corn. He walks you through instructions to do that. But I had some charred corn left over from dinner one night last week. So I'm just going to use that, cut it off the cob, and add that to my salad. Last but not least, we're going to add in the vinaigrette and then give that a good toss. And that's it. The salad is done. Now you can eat this right away. You can pop this in the refrigerator and allow it to chill. When I used to work outside of the home and take my lunch to work, I would meal prep this like on a Sunday and take it to lunch for a few days with the brown rice and the black beans and everything. It's a very filling salad. It's something that you don't have to worry about warming up. You can eat it cool, room temperature. That with just like a grilled chicken or grilled protein made the perfect lunch. And you can totally customize this, of course. I think his recipe calls for you to add um, red onions. I skipped it. You could also add bell peppers, jalapenos, whatever you like. 
For my other side, I'm gonna cook up some broccolini. I got this at Kroger, it was already washed and trimmed. All I did was toss it with a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and garlic powder, and I popped this into the air fryer. I think I cooked it at like 380 degrees for maybe about seven to eight minutes. Just cooked it until it started to get brown and crispy and it was tender. All right, here are the plates. So we've got some of the salad, the grilled chicken, the broccolini, and this was a delicious dinner. That chicken combined with the rice salad was so good. For dinner the next night, I did a shrimp boil sheet pan dinner. I didn't really follow a recipe for this, but I'll try to find one similar to what I did and link it down below for you. So first up, I'm gonna make like a creamy Cajun dipping sauce. I will have the recipe, of course, in the description box below. Here are the ingredients that I'm going to use to make it. I've got some mayonnaise, Cajun seasoning, garlic powder, smoked paprika, and I just eyeballed the ingredients. I kind of used the recipe as inspiration, and the recipe called for you to use tomato paste, but I'm going to use just a tiny little bit of ketchup. I didn't want to open up a whole thing of tomato paste just for the little bit in this recipe, um, so I'm just going to mix that until it's really combined and then pop it into the fridge until I'm ready for it for dinner. So for the proteins, I've got some shrimp. These have been peeled and deveined. The tails are on, but personal preference, I'm gonna remove the tails. And then for the sausage, you could use andouille or whatever kind of sausage you prefer. I've got some turkey smoked sausage, so I'm just gonna slice that up and then set the shrimp and sausage to the side. Now I like to mix everything up in a big bowl and then add it to the sheet pan. You can just add everything to the sheet pan and give it a toss if you prefer. Normally I use baby potatoes for this, but today I had some regular size red potatoes on hand. So what I did was wash them really well, prick them with a fork, pop them into the microwave for about four minutes, and then just cut them into chunks. Once I've added the potatoes, I'm going to add some corn to my sheet pan. Um, you can toss it with everything if you prefer to do that. Uh, fresh corn would be great this time of year, but I had these little corn nibblers in my freezer that really needed to be used up, so I'm going to use those. I added my shrimp and cut up sausage to the bowl. I'm drizzling that with some melted butter, and then I'm going to season it. Use whatever seasonings you like, season it to your taste. I'm going to use some Cajun seasoning as well as Old Bay. Once I've got that seasoned up, I'm gonna give it a really good toss and then place that on the sheet pan. I did lightly spray the sheet pan with some uh, just cooking spray. And then I'm gonna pop this into a preheated oven at 425 degrees. And you wanna cook it for about 12 to 15 minutes until the shrimp is pink, your potatoes and corn is cooked all the way through. You can broil it for a minute or two if you want everything to get brown, but I was happy with everything after about 12 to 15 minutes. So here's what it looked like when it was done. Now, we hadn't eaten this day, and so I knew we'd be pretty hungry at dinner. A couple weeks or so ago, they had these stuffed scallops on sale at Publix. They were buy one, get one free, and so I decided to just cook these up in the oven according to the package instructions. I saw these frozen Red Lobster Cheddar Bay Biscuits at Walmart a few weeks ago, and I thought they would be good for us, but it just being the two of us, um, you know, when I make like the homemade copycat version with Bisquick or use the packaged um, baking mix from the grocery store, it makes more biscuits than what Gary and I can eat or honestly need. So I thought these would be great for us because I could just pop a couple into the oven. Um, all you do is take the biscuit dough, it comes in little disc already frozen, you place them onto a greased baking sheet. Once you bake them according to the package instructions, you take some melted butter, mix it with the seasoning packet it includes, and brush it over the biscuits. On this particular night, I cooked them up in the air fryer. And here are the plates. So we've got some of the shrimp boil, the stuffed scallops, that Cajun dipping sauce. I served uh, some lime wedges, not lime wedges, lemon wedges that we could uh, drizzle over the shrimp boil. And then we've got the biscuits and I did some side salads and this was a delicious dinner. That sheet pan dinner is so quick and easy to put together and it has good flavor. Those biscuits, they were good. I will say I do prefer like the homemade copycat version or the uh, baking mix but these were still really good. So if you see these, um, you know, I'd give them a try. I thought they were pretty good. 
For dinner the next night, I did a Thai pineapple peanut satay chicken. That is a mouthful. <laughs> I've shared this before on my channel. We made it for the first time a few months ago and really enjoyed it, but I'll just kind of quickly walk you through it again. And of course, as always, the recipe will be linked down below. So for the marinade and sauce for the chicken, here are the ingredients we're going to use. We've got some ground black pepper, pineapple juice, brown sugar, fish sauce, soy sauce, ground ginger, sriracha, lime juice, and I apologize, ignore the coconut milk for now. We're going to use that in just a minute. Garlic powder, dried basil, and olive oil. So what I'm going to do is combine all of those ingredients into a, I'm using a measuring cup, you could do a bowl. And again, check the recipe for exact measurements. Once it's well combined, we're going to take a quarter cup of the marinade and add it to a Ziploc bag and you wanna reserve the rest of the marinade. We're gonna use that to make a sauce later. To the Ziploc bag, in addition to the marinade, we're going to add a little bit of olive oil and then some cut up chicken. Now you can use chicken breast, that's what I used the last time. This time I had some chicken thighs in my freezer I needed to use up, so I'll let those thaw completely and cut them into chunks. Once you've got the marinade, the oil, and the chicken in a Ziploc bag, make sure you pop it into the refrigerator and marinate it for a couple hours. When I'm ready to start dinner, I'm going to preheat my outdoor grill. I skewered the marinated chicken onto some metal skewers with some fresh pineapple. You could of course use canned pineapple. And if you're going to use wooden skewers, make sure that you soak them in water for at least 30 minutes before you cook them. The recipe also gives you instructions on baking these in the oven if you'd prefer to do that. So I just grilled these, like I said, on the outdoor grill. Make sure you cook the chicken until it's at least 165 degrees. Now, while those skewers are resting, we're going to put together the sauce for the chicken. So in this saucepan, I added the reserved marinade. I brought it to a boil. Once it's at a boil, we're going to add a cornstarch slurry, which is coconut milk, along with some cornstarch. Whisk that in, and then you're going to bring it to a boil. It'll come back up to a boil. Reduce the heat and simmer it for one minute. Now, the last time that I made this, I felt like it got really, really, really thick. And I thought, oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? It happened again this time. So personally, I just feel like the recipe calls for um, more cornstarch than what is needed. So I would cut the cornstarch like in half and see how the consistency goes. Um, you know, you can always add a little more, add another cornstarch slurry. If you want to thicken it up, you can reduce it down. Uh, for me though, I just added in the whole can of coconut milk until it was desired consistency. So after one minute, remove that from the heat, stir in the peanut butter, give it a taste, adjust the seasonings to your taste. You can add a little extra lime juice, soy sauce, whatever you feel like it needs. And I'm going to set that sauce to the side. Now, once the chicken was done, right before I pulled it off the grill, I did brush both sides of the skewers with some of the sauce and then save the rest for dipping. Next up is the coconut rice. I will have the recipe in the description box below for this, but it was really easy. Just a couple of ingredients. First up, I'm going to use some jasmine rice. You could also use basmati or whatever kind you've got on hand. We've got some of that coconut milk and then some water. We're just going to add everything to the rice cooker and turn it on. And then once the rice cooker turns off, it's done. I like to turn the rice cooker off at that point and without removing the lid, I let it sit for about five to seven minutes and then fluff it with a fork. For the side, I tried a new recipe for sweet chili roasted Brussels sprouts. It's from Iowa Girl Eats. The oven is preheating to 425 degrees. I've got some Brussels sprouts here that have already been halved and washed. If they haven't been, you'll want to do that. Make sure you trim them. I'm adding them to a foil lined baking sheet, and then I'm going to drizzle them with some olive oil and season to taste with some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. I'm gonna give that a toss, and then I popped these into the preheated oven, and you wanna bake these for, I don't know, I mean, it depends on how big um, your Brussels sprouts are, but I'd say about 15 to 17 minutes or until they start to get tender. While the sprouts are cooking, we're going to make the sauce. This is super, super easy. It's just two ingredients. We're going to combine some sweet chili sauce, just use your favorite brand, as well as some soy sauce. I prefer to use low sodium soy sauce, but just use your favorite. We're going to combine those two ingredients. And what I did was I took just a little bit of water and kind of shook it around in the bottle just because I was trying to get the um, all of the leftover sweet chili sauce out of that bottle. 
So once it's well mixed, that's it. We're going to set that to the side and wait until we're ready to drizzle it on the Brussels sprouts. So here's what the Brussels sprouts look like when they were done. Uh, the recipe said to brush the Brussels sprouts with a pastry brush. I just drizzled it over, pop it back into the oven for, I don't know, maybe like five minutes or so until the sauce starts to get caramelized and that's it. They'll be done. And here are the plates. I laid down a bed of that coconut rice, added the pineapple and chicken, garnished it with some chopped green onions, crushed peanuts, and then a lime wedge. We have some of the extra sauce for dipping and then the Brussels sprouts. And the Brussels sprouts suggested that you garnish it with some chopped peanuts as well, which at first I was kind of like, yeah, I don't know about that, but I went with it and I did. It was good. It gave a nice little crunch to it. This dinner was delicious. We felt like we were like on a tropical island or something between the lime and the coconut and the grilled pineapple. Just yummy dinner. For dinner the next night, I did some Baja fish tacos. I'm gonna start out by making a quick Baja sauce. Of course, the recipe will be linked down below. I'm going to add some sour cream to a bowl. I've also made this in the past using plain non-fat Greek yogurt. That turns out well. I'm going to then add some mayonnaise. Next, I'm going to add in some fresh lime juice. You could really just use this stuff in a bottle if that's what you've got on hand. Next, I'm going to season this to taste with some uh, Old Bay as well as a little bit of cayenne pepper. And then I'm going to add in some chopped cilantro. If you're a cilantro hater, just leave it out or you could use parsley instead. I'm going to mix this until it's combined really well and then give this a taste and adjust the seasonings to your taste. Add a little more lime, a little more Old Bay, pa uh, not paprika, cayenne pepper, whatever you feel like it needs. I added just a pinch of salt off camera. So once it's well combined, I mean, really you could eat it right away, but it's really best if it goes in the refrigerator at least for 30 minutes just to allow the flavors to combine. I had another side planned for this, but I had some leftover grilled corn in the fridge that needed to be used up. So I decided to do a like Mexican street corn salad. I'll have the recipe linked down below. I've shared it a few times before on my channel. Um, so here's what I'm gonna use to make it. I've got some sour cream, mayo, lime juice, that leftover grilled corn, cilantro I'm gonna chop up, some minced garlic. Now, normally you would use cotija cheese. I don't have any, but I do have some feta on hand, so I'm gonna use that. Some jalapeno I'm going to seed and finely dice. Some chili powder, and then you may need some salt and pepper depending on your taste. So all I did was combine the ingredients, and then I'm gonna pop this into the fridge and allow it to chill for a little bit while I make the rest of dinner. So for the tilapia, you could saute this on top of the stove, bake this in the oven. I decided to do it in the air fryer this night. So I just took the tilapia, uh, I had allowed this to thaw. I rubbed it with some olive oil, and then for the seasonings, really you can use whatever seasonings you prefer. Tonight, I decided to keep it simple and just use some taco seasoning, salt and pepper, and I seasoned both sides of the tilapia. I placed it into my air fryer and I cooked it at 400 degrees for about eight to 10 minutes until it flaked easily with a fork. So here's my plate. Gary was at the gym this night, so he ate later than I did. I forgot to get a picture of his plate, but it was basically the same thing. We've got some of the street corn salad. I warmed up some tortillas, added the tilapia, added some uh, coleslaw mix, that Baja sauce, and some sliced Sliced avocados and then we had some fresh watermelon that I sprinkled a little tahini on such a good dinner here lately on YouTube and Instagram I've seen several people make homemade hamburger helper and it has just been looking so good to me and I saw simply mama cooks make a version I don't know maybe a few weeks or so ago or maybe a month um, and it just looked yummy I wanted to try her version and so I'll have her uh, video linked in the description box below I did have her recipe by the way so in this skillet, I've got it over medium heat. I'm going to add in some ground beef and season it with a little salt and pepper. Now I'm using lean ground beef, so I won't have to drain it. But if you're using a more fatty uh, ground beef, you, you may need to drain it. So just keep an eye on it. We're also going to add in some garlic powder, onion powder, and smoked paprika. I just eyeballed it. Um, do this to taste and add whatever seasonings you prefer. Now, there is nothing in the world wrong with using boxed hamburger helper. No shame or judgment there. But if you've never made it homemade, I suggest you give it a try. It really doesn't take that much longer than, um, you know, the box stuff. And I don't know, there, it's just such a good flavor. So once that ground beef is cooked all the way through, I'm going to add in my elbow macaroni noodles. 
Next, we're gonna add in some beef broth. You could also just use water and beef bouillon. You could do chicken stock, whatever you prefer. You wanna make sure that your noodles are down in the liquid. We're gonna bring this to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer. And you'll wanna cook this until the noodles are done to your liking. Keep an eye on it. You may need to add a little bit more liquid. I don't know why, but anytime I try to make um, like a one pot dish like this with noodles, for some reason, it always takes me like twice the amount of time the recipe says and twice the amount of liquid. I don't know why. I don't know if it's my stove or I don't know if we just like our noodles done a little bit more. But like I said, just keep an eye on it. You may need to add a little bit more liquid. But once the noodles are tender, then we're going to continue to the next step. Now, in Simply Mama Cooks, she used uh, Velveeta cheese that she just cubed up. I had a package of this uh, Velveeta sauce on hand, so I'm going to use that. And then I added some shredded cheddar cheese. She suggested using half and half. I had some heavy cream, so I added some heavy cream and just regular milk on hand, basically making half and half. So I'm going to give that a stir and then turn this down to low. And I just cooked this for another couple minutes until the cheese was nice and melted. Give this a taste, adjust the seasonings to your taste, and look at just how crazy creamy and cheesy this is so good so here are the finished plates just like we used to have it when i was a kid this goes best with just plain old white bread that's buttered and then for the side i just did some quick veggies that i had in my fridge um i have some ranch dressing to dip my veggies in and gary has some of the marzetti blue cheese for dinner the next night we did a little date night we were going to go to our favorite local mexican restaurant I don't know what was going on. They were like so incredibly busy. I mean, their whole foyer and there was a line out the door and like, it's never <laughs> busy. Um, so we were like, uh, no, we're just gonna go next door to Chili's because there was no wait. So to get started, um, we got their Southwestern egg rolls. They're so good with the avocado ranch dressing. And then for the entrees, Gary got their, I think it's called the old timer or old time burger and fries. And then I could not decide between their big mouth bites or chicken strips. They've redone their chicken strip recipe and I kind of wanted to try it. I couldn't decide. So I just did a triple dipper and got the big mouth bites, the original chicken crispers, and then the honey chipotle chicken crispers. Now for the chicken crispers, they were okay. I liked the old recipe better. Um, this recipe, and I mean, look, it could have just been our restaurant. It could have just been this batch, but they were really, really dry. It was like all breading, very little meat. Um, and yeah, so I prefer the old recipe. And then I love the big mouth bites, of course. And then this is totally nitpicky and personal preference, but I did not care for their honey mustard at all. Um, I don't like like a honey Dijon honey mustard. I just want like honey, mayonnaise, mustard, little lemon juice. That's it. I do not like the Dijon or whole grain mustard when they add it to honey mustard. So that's totally my personal preference. Um, but it was still pretty good. I had half of my meal left over, as you can see here. We took it home. I had it for lunch the next day. I had one of my sliders and half of my chicken left over. And then we have not had their molten lava cake in so long. And it's like Gary's favorite dessert. And so we had that for dessert. Well, I had a couple bites of it. If you know me, you know, I don't like a lot of sweets, especially really rich chocolate desserts. So two bites and I was good. Um, but it was nice to get out for a little bit and not have to cook, not have to clean up after dinner. All right, last but not least, I'm making what I call a summer veggie plate. My grandparents would have just called it supper. I'm going to do some purple whole peas. If you've never had these before, they're kind of related to uh, black eyed peas. And if you see, they look just like black eyed peas, just a different color. So I am going to cook those up with a ham hock. I just added the uh, peas along with the ham hock to a pot covered it in water, added a little bit of garlic powder, uh, onion powder, and then brought it to a boil. I boiled it for a good probably 20 minutes at a hard boil and then reduced the heat and simmered it for a couple hours. You do want to keep an eye on this. You'll probably have to need, uh, probably have to need, you'll probably need to go in and add water and give it a stir to keep your beans from, um, burning and running out of water once the beans are tender to your liking give them a taste you can add a little salt pepper a little more garlic onion whatever you prefer 
Next, I'm going to make some cornbread. I'm going to do a small batch tonight with it just being the two of us. I don't need a lot left over. I have the recipe typed out in the description box below. If you want to do a full batch of cornbread, just use the recipe from the uh, Martha White cornmeal. So to my cast iron skillet, I've got some shortening. I prefer to use bacon grease, honestly, but I didn't have any today. So I'm going to put a little bit of shortening in the skillet and then pop this into the oven while it preheats to 425 degrees. While the oven and skillet are preheating, we're going to mix up the batter. So to a bowl, I'm going to add in some self-rising cornmeal. If you don't have self-rising, just Google it. It'll give you um, instructions on how to turn just regular into self-rising. Next, we're going to add some flour and then give that a whisk just to combine it. Then I'm going to add in an egg. If you're doing a full batch of cornbread, I'd recommend putting in a second egg. That's what my grandpa used to do um, to do like extra moist cornbread. Once I've added that, we are going to add in the buttermilk oil. You can add whatever kind of oil. You can do melted shortening, lard, bacon grease, butter, whatever you like. I just grabbed the olive oil because it was handy. Then we are going to add in a spoonful of mayonnaise. This is another of my grandpa's suggestions to do moist cornbread. And then we're going to mix that until it's well combined. I didn't add any sugar. If you want to add sugar to your cornbread, add it. You can also add in some corn kernels, um, some onion, whatever you like. We're going to add that mixture to our hot pan. And again, it's hot. It just came out of the oven and it's cast iron. So it's going to hold in that heat. Be careful. We're going to add the batter and then this is going to go into the preheated oven. For the small batch, this usually takes me about maybe 15 to 18 minutes. Once it's done all the way through, a toothpick comes out clean and it starts to get golden on top. It's done. Pull it out and then turn it out onto a plate and it'll be ready for us for dinner. Next, I'm going to make my mom's corn. So in this large bowl, I've got another small bowl that is turned upside down. I'm then going to take my corn. Now, this has already had the husk removed. And then using a knife very carefully, you're going to cut the corn off. Now, my mom's secret is she doesn't go all the way to the cob. She goes like, like imagine if you're cutting like halfway through the kernel. She leaves part of the corn that's still on the kernel. And then once she gets that cut off, she then goes around with the back of her knife. You can also do this using a butter knife, um, the, the, not the rounded edge of the butter knife, the flat side. And then you want to slowly scrape the corn cob. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna pull all the little pieces of corn that you've left on there it's also going to pull off all the, I call it milk. It's basically the starch and the corn cob that is going to make it really creamy. So you really wanna take your time and really scrape the corn off the cob. And this is what it looked like. I don't know if you can see all the little like milky, creamy bits of it. We're gonna add the corn to some melted butter. I just placed some butter in a cast iron skillet and this is over about medium heat. Once I've added the corn to the butter, I'm gonna add in maybe a half a cup or so of water a little bit of salt and pepper, and then you're just going to simmer this for maybe about 25, 30 minutes until the corn is tender. And keep an eye on this. You may need to go in and add a little splash of water as you go. I had about three quarters of a jar of sauerkraut in my fridge that I needed to use up as well as a piece of turkey smoked sausage. So I decided to do some sauerkraut and wieners or sauerkraut and weenies as we say. This is really easy, but it is so good. In this skillet, this is over about medium high heat. I've got some butter. I'm gonna add in the sliced turkey sausage and we normally use hot dogs for this, but again, just using what I've got on hand. I'm gonna cook this for just a couple minutes on each side until it gets golden brown. Once it's there, I'm going to add in the sauerkraut, and then I added just a tiny little bit of salt and pepper, as well as a sprinkle of brown sugar. You don't have to add the brown sugar. Sometimes I add it, sometimes I don't. It doesn't make it sweet. It just kind of tames down the sourness of the sauerkraut. But I simmered this for maybe about 15 minutes or so until the uh, sauerkraut started to get a little golden brown. Here I've got some fresh tomatoes. These came from the Amish. I've got some yellow tomatoes and red as well as a fresh cucumber I sliced up. And then we've got some pickled okra and that is all Gary, not me. Mm -mm, can't do it. The sliminess, blech. And then some hot chow chow. He likes to put this on his beans. If you've never had these, or his peas rather. If you've never had chow chow before, it's just a Southern relish. And then the next jar, it's not plastic pickles. These are some homemade small batch refrigerator pickles I made a couple days or so ago. Um, I'll be sharing this in an upcoming video with you. 
Here are the plates. Gary's is on the left. Mine is on the right. I cannot even begin to tell you how incredibly delicious this meal was. Those peas were so good. The cornbread was delicious. Those fresh vegetables, the pickled vegetables, the sauerkraut wieners, and that corn. Oh, I don't think there's anything better than fresh corn. It is so delicious. All right, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video and got some dinner ideas from it. If you did, hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And don't forget to go check out Tiffany's channel. Again, it'll be linked down in the description box below for you. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.